Hello, my name is Jennifer Molnar, and I'd like to welcome you to my talk on the complexities of non-anthropomorphic hands. Virtual reality offers an opportunity to inhabit bodies of different forms. However, most VR experiences utilize humanoid avatars. The reason for this is simple. Mapping a user's body onto a non-anthropomorphic body shape is not a trivial problem. This is particularly true for bodies that have more degrees of freedom than the human body. In order to fully utilize the variety of experiences that virtual reality can potentially offer, we need a way to generate control schemes that map human shapes onto non-anthropomorphic forms. In this paper, we focus on non-anthropomorphism at the hand level. Hands are a good place to start because they are both dexterous and well-characterized, and the body part most commonly used to teleoperate real or virtual devices. Even with this narrowed scope, control of non-anthropomorphic hands is a research topic immediately relevant to prosthesis design, teleoperation, and control of tools and avatars in virtual reality. Non-anthropomorphic hands allow us to ask questions about how we embody our tools and incorporate them into our body schemas, how we might map hands to non-anthropomorphic objects, tools, or effects, and creates a platform for understanding and supporting motor learning processes in adults. We searched the literature to find examples of non-anthropomorphic hands, or NAHs, in research and organized them into the following categories. Hands that exist in physical reality, whose control schemes must take real-world physics into account, versus virtual hands that have no such constraints. We also found a distinction between NAHs used as proxies or surrogates for the user's hand, and NAHs that augment or supplement it. While surrogate NAHs are mapped to the user's primary hand function, supplementary NAHs must use control schemes that leave that primary hand function intact. However, these hands from literature are more or less human-shaped, plus or minus some fingers. While this is a great starting point for research, there are many other kinds of NAHs possible. NAHs can be non-anthropomorphic in terms of both shape and movement, and either option will require invention of a control scheme. Examples of such NAHs already exist in art and industry, but are mostly still inspirational and not functional. Such NAHs require much more radical control schemes than the ones on the previous slide, which usually simply ignored inputs from unnecessary fingers or used pressure pads under the user's feet to control extra ones. An NAH's control scheme, form, and function heavily influence each other. Trends in each, as well as a complete list of the components required for an NAH system, are given in our paper. We also consolidate the objective and subjective metrics most commonly used by NAHs of different categories to evaluate system performance. In conclusion, virtual reality has the potential to transform our bodies if we can design control schemes that accommodate novel forms. The system components and evaluation methods presented in this paper provide a basis for developing a greater variety of future NAHs along with appropriate and functional control systems. Thank you, and we hope to see you at our poster session.